Hello YouTube, um, this is Stantis. I will be doing um, the second part of the Let's Play for Resident Evil 5. Veteran difficulty with Sheva and her bow. Um, and the rifle. Um, sometimes I use other weapons that we find along the way, but mostly I will be using the bow and the rifle. So I'm just clearing my inventory here before we start. The next area is a lot of sniping, so I will be using a lot of these Rifle ammo. And I think we're ready. So in this level, we will be sniping a lot of enemies. Um, after a cutscene happens. Um, this, these pots over here, they always drop at least one rifle ammo stack. As soon as your character looks towards this direction, this cutscene happens. And all these zombies will be able to be killed. We can leave them alone, but even if you do, they will start attacking you once they reach a certain point towards that cave, like so. Or you can start shooting at them without waiting. I really like the bow because it's very versatile. Um, you can snipe at them if you want. If you know how to aim, then it's really useful, but it is hard to aim. Um, for some reason, the game capture program I'm using doesn't let me do live commentary and listen to the game audio at the same time. So unfortunately, I can't really hear anything. So if a zombie is right, coming right at me, I can't really hear it. So that explains why I will be getting hit by some of them sometimes. But, um, I just like killing zombies, but these zombies you can um, completely ignore. You can just skip them and progress to the next um, task that you need to do without killing them. So I thought I was going to need a lot of rifle ammo, but we were able to clear them with just my bow. Um, there are some two vases over there and there's always a guy standing by those vases and here if you walk towards these vases then more zombies will spawn but if you don't then these guys right here will not spawn and you can tell that they're gonna co they're coming once the music starts again. Um, but they're nothing special in those vases, so you can just completely skip them to avoid um, fighting these guys. Once you reach the top of that ladder, then another cutscene happens and a lot more zombies will show up. Two will come from behind, as you can see, so make sure to kill those. And then a lot of guys will be coming from over there. There's one guy shooting arrows at us, so make sure to 
just watch over his arrows so that you don't get hit by them. Fortunately, they have terrible aim, so most of the time they'll just miss. And over here, we're going to have Chris use the crank while we go um, to get on the raft over here. Well, that's pretty much it for this area. Um, I used the option for the Nintendo Switch to avoid these situations where I have to mash a button in order to avoid some hazards. Uh, just because I don't really like the mechanic in general, so that's why my character is moving by, by herself. Um, but. Yeah, that's why we're just kind of standing here waiting for this part to be over. And even if you have that mechanic, uh, the, that uh, option turned on to avoid going through the mechanic, if you are aiming at something, then your character will get eaten by the alligators, so be careful with that. So we're going to reunite with Chris and keep going into the cave. There are two gems here that are hidden on these little torches. And in this map as well, there are a few secrets in this map too. After the cutscene. Um, some snakes will jump at you. As you walk through the grass, you can kill them if you find one. Or you can just simply use your flash rounds to kill them if you're having trouble aiming at them. But there's a jewel over here. There's a snake over here. You can have it. Okay. Again, you don't need to collect the you don't need to kill the snakes or collect the eggs. I just like to do it because it, I think it's fun. Um, here are some barrels. And here's your emblem. Here's another barrel that Chris just broke. And then here is Come on. Roger. a spray. Let's have him I need an egg. get rid of these eggs. Come on. Okay. I need ammo. Use this. Thanks. You take that. Roger. Here is an incendiary grenade. Um, over here, I think he picked it up already. Yeah, Chris already picked it up. And in this hut over here, there's only a few barrels. So not much to do there. And down here, we will find another hidden jewel up here. And that's it for this level. The next level, we will be fighting two chainsaw guys. <coughs> and this level too, there are a few things you can do to make your life a little easier. Um, before you jump down from the platform, you can kill the guys with whatever weapon you have. And once you jump down, then these guys will start 
coming at you. There's a guy with a dynamite. So if you have some flash rounds, you can just flash, um, shoot at him. And he'll just blow up for you and kill the other zombies for you. There are two guys over here waiting for you. And we can go up here, where we can have Chris use the, the wheel to stop the fire. Oh, I forgot about this guy. Again, I don't have the sound on, so I couldn't tell that the music hasn't stopped yet. Uh, once he stops. Uh, once he's finished with that, then zombies will spawn over here. And one of them has a dynamite again, so we can use our flash rounds to kill them. And there's another crossbow guy over there that's hidden behind the pillar. Now picking up these rifle ammo is pretty useful because we will be using the rifle a lot after this part. Um, but here's the first chainsaw guy. He spawns right next to, to us, uh, right over there. And what you can do is, that was a little slow, but he, you can keep shooting at him before he jumps down the platform to stun him. So that you can avoid this situation where you have to face him face to face. Again, this is much easier because I have the flash rounds and my bow, which does a lot of damage. And again, he drops a certain, he drops um, to the ground a certain way, and his chainsaw is still on, so you know that he's not actually dead yet. So we're going to wait until he gets up. Even if you shoot him now, it doesn't damage him. You actually have to wait until he starts getting up. Once you see that checkpoint message, it means that he's actually dead. So that's just a little I need ammo. trick that um, I, need your I learned. You take that. Um, and pick up these landmines because they will be useful later. Chris. We're going to have Chris do this for us to turn off the fire. And while he's doing that, we can go over here. Um, I forgot to mention, one of these barrels actually drops an incendiary grenade all the time. And then there's a jewel over here that I think I already picked up. And so we're going to go this way. And this will be our second machine gun, or sorry, chainsaw guy. And he will spawn from up there as soon as we get rid of the, um, the bar that's blocking the door. So we're going to get rid of it. And as soon as she's done with the animation, then he will spawn. So you can wait for him to come down. We don't have to wait for him to open the door. We can keep shooting at him. Okay. 
So because the chainsaw guy is so close to us, our own flash rounds are actually damaging us. So that's the one thing you have to be careful with. So there, that animation that he just did is a little different from the first one. So you can tell that he's already dead. Um, another way, to, easier way to know is that the chainsaw is okay. turned off. So while Chris is turning the wheel for us, we can start going to the next area. And here, as soon as we start walking towards here, then some zombies will start spawning. Uh, one of them has a dynamite again, so we can use our flash rounds to use their dy own dynamite to kill a few zombies to make it easier for us. We're ready to move on to the next area. This area is where we reunite with Josh. And we will be helping him escape, basically. Here we're just going to kill a lot of zombies while we wait for him to open the elevator for us. You have to be careful here, there's a zombie always on the, on the, um, he's the only one that climbs down from there. These barrels are random, but the one barrel over here is always a hand grenade. And I like to stick to this spot over here because I have easy access to both the zombies coming from that window and the zombies coming from trying to climb over the fence over here. So I snipe the ones coming from that window while I take care of the zombies here as well. And after a while these big guys come. They're not that easy hard though because I have the bow and they stun very pretty easily and they drop their usual golden bangles and we can keep going this part seems pretty hectic um, but it's really if you know where the zombies spawn and all that then it's pretty easy There are some crossbow guys I like to take care of beforehand because they are really annoying if you leave them alone. Fortunately Josh helps us um, kill them and he's pretty good with his aim. Here's another one of these landmines that you should collect because we will be using them later. Here as soon as you approach this ladder over here then these guys spawn. And there's one behind us, so be careful with that. Once we defeat those three, we can keep going. And again, you don't have to kill these zombies. You can just run right through them. Killing zombies in this game is usually optional. Once we get to this part, then Josh will start trying to opening this door. While that's happening, a lot more zombies will be showing up. So I like to stay in this area while we wait for Josh to finish what he is doing. They're all going to start climbing over there, so we can start sniping them. And 
Now, I was playing online, and a lot of people like to use the landmines that we find on this guy by placing it around these areas, but there's a much better use for them that I'll show later on. Now, this guy's not dead yet, and we can tell because his chainsaw is still on. So, we're going to keep shooting at him. Again, you don't have to kill him, but if you want the jewel, then... And this is a, a round I'm trying to get all the jewels, so we are going to kill him. Oh, I guess he doesn't drop a jewel. Oh, no, there it is. So these zombies are going to keep coming. Eventually they do stop. Um, but I do enjoy killing them, so we're just going to kill all of them. And I just want to show how nice the bow is. The only drawback is honestly the aim. But once you know how to aim, then it's pretty strong. And what I like about it is that it's always going to be infinite ammo. So say you are joining a random game online, and even if the host shows no infinite ammo, you can always count on the bow to have infinite ammo all the time. So that looks like those are the last few. And what's good about the bow too is if you're trying to make a collection of um, like a stash of ammo for like a challenge run that you want to do, like a shotgun only challenge or um, handgun only challenge, things like that, and no infinite ammo, then you can really count on the Uh, bow, so you can collect all those items. Because if you put infinite ammo and you try to do, you try to collect those ammunitions. If you put the option for infinite ammo, then ammo does not drop. Um, here, are, this is the area where the zombies were before, and two barrels will be here. We already broke them, so. It's just a little neat, neat thing that you can do. And we can go to the next area. This area is where we're going to use those landmines that we collected. One of them will be to kill um, some annoying enemies that we're going to try to Um, blow up using the mines. Now, he Chris has the mines, and he will not move from that spot because he's looking at Irvin's boat. So we have to come over here to make him move, and then we can ask for the mines. First mine that we're going to put is right around here. Not too close to the door, but close enough. A little closer here. Um, because some enemies are going to pop out from there and the bombs will take care of it for us. And what you can do is you can break these barrels before um, initiating the, the next sequence. Because the ne next sequence you only have two minutes to do um, to go through this area, to that dock over there. So, if you don't want to feel like you missed out on an item or so, if you missed out on breaking a barrel, then you can do that right now. And the other mine that we're going to use is just around here. And you're going to see why we placed it over there, but basically um, enemies are going to spawn and it makes our life much easier if we have those mines over there.
Now here, this barrel over here always has a, a hand grenade. So we're going to pick it up. And once you ha cross that, this area over here, you can't, um, the cutscene will trigger. So we're going to break that barrel to save some time. And here, once the loading screen is gone, we actually turn back because here's a hidden um, case with a bunch of gold. And then here is an emblem. The first time I played this game, I freaked out with the timer and did not see any of these goodies over here. So, and here we can snipe these zombies. Again, these are all optional. But there's always two over here and two over there. And then we can proceed to go over here, and all these zombies are going to spawn, but again, the landmines are going to take care of it for us. Once you open this door, dogs will spawn. Oh, we missed one. Sometimes I can get all of them. Um, this big guy will always drop the jewel. So, since this is an all jewel run, we're going to try and get it. And then, here's a bomb. And then, here a bunch of guys are going to spawn. Since we only have 30 seconds, we're going to have to hurry a little bit. And we're done. So we did take a long time. Um, that's why we have a score of A. And our aim is was pretty bad as well because of the bow. But again, if you're looking to collect points, then um, try to use a better aiming gun. Um, I'm gonna restock on the flash rounds here. And I'll give Sheva a lot of ammo because this area we're going to be needing it a lot. Now this area, we're going to be on a boat with Josh, and it's going to be a lot of sniping. These guys are really hard to aim, but again, they're optional anyway. So, and they have terrible aim as well, so you don't really have to worry about killing them. Here you can aim at the explosives the zombies. Here we can aim at this one. And there's some in the distance here. Again, these are all optional. There's a emblem right here, and here's a barrel. There's a guy throwing dynamite, I think, at us, or some cocktails. And 
not much to mention here. Um, we're just gonna run around here. Here's some handgun ammo. And we're gonna turn this to open the gate. As soon as we do that, some more zombies will spawn. These guys, they'll um, dynamites, so make sure to kill them. Those flying things will actually aim, um, fly towards Josh, which um, he's right there. And it doesn't really, they don't seem to do any damage to him, they just kind of fly on his head, above his head, and they don't really do much. So I'm not really sure why they were programmed to do that, but they were pretty much easy pickings. Now here is a little trick. If you're really into killing and sniping zombies, then you can get to this spot and start sniping them. Um, these are all optional zombies, you don't have to kill them at all. It's just, if you're like into sniping, then, which I am, it's um, a lot of fun to just snipe them before proceeding. So the first spot I use is around here, right past this, this pole. The second um, spot I like to use is right before getting on the boat. Because um, now you can see this one over here. And there's always one that I miss. I'm going to try and see if I can find him. But if not, it's not a big deal. Yeah, there he is. Uh, this is why we picked up all those um, rifle ammo, because I like to snipe all those zombies. Now much else to mention here, other than there's only one zombie that's that you must kill, otherwise um, he's going to throw a dynamite and it explodes just at the right spot where you can both die and that'll be game over. So the only one that's really necessary is this guy. So he already threw it, so we're probably gonna get hit. Yeah. So make sure to get that one guy so that we don't have to I like I did. All right, let's go. Sometimes the dynamite won't kill you. Um, it'll still hit you, but it, may, it might just be one of you, so the other can heal you. But a lot of times, it does hit both of you. It's this guy right here. Yeah, got him. Okay, so I think that's everyone. This next part, also you need the sniper rifle. So I'm a little low on ammo, so that's when I start trying to find some. Usually I don't find any though, unless they're scripted um, for rifle ammo. Um, but over there, there's some rifle ammo there. But as soon as you cross, cross this line over here, then a, a bunch of zombies are going to spawn, and they're going to start using that turret on you. So what you're going to do is immediately kill them before they start shooting. Because once they're shooting at you, it's a real big pain. They have really good aim, those turrets do a ton of damage. So yeah, that's pretty much it. 
keep spawning, but it's not a big deal. Um, what I like to what I like to do is clear these zombies first. back here. Now the first time, uh, the first few times I played this game I had no idea about this part. I think I actually had to look it up online to discover that there's a whole place over here where you can collect items. Here's a random barrel. Here is a shotgun. This shotgun is really good. Um, and it finally replaces the first shotgun that you got. Here's some ammo, and here's a first aid spray. We're getting low on healing items, so that's a nice little thing. And down here, we're gonna find um, a jewel, a hidden jewel here, right here. And this barrel always drops. Magnum ammo, so. And these Magnum um, ammunitions are going to be really useful later on in the game. Here's a red herb. And here's a barrel. Over here are. Um, you can climb over here to break that barrel if you would like. Um, in this place over here, there's a barrel, and in this drawer is a hidden gem. Over here, there's another um, turret. Another herb here. And then here's some shotgun shells. And over here I can see some handgun ammo and machine gun ammo. Chris, Roger. Take care of the other We're gonna have Chris take care of that lever while we go over here. And this part too is a little um, part where you can obviously again you can skip all these enemies, but. What you can do is go up back up here, go on this turret, and start killing um, these flying guys. There's a crossbow guy there. And I'm not sure how the spawning works in this area, but if you stay here, then all these other flying ones keep coming. But if you don't stay here, as in if you start walking towards Josh's boat, then these guys won't spawn. See, they keep spawning here. Um, if you're trying to get a high score in this chapter, I would not recommend doing this because all those misses that you do with the turret counts towards towards against your um, against your score. But like I said, they keep spawning if you stay here, and I think it's like two or three times that they spawn and they they stop spawning. I think that's the last round of them. The spawning is very interesting in this map. I I still haven't quite figured it out, but once those birds are gone, then you can move back to Josh. But then some zombies start spawning. Um, oh yeah, there's two birds that always come once you start heading towards Josh, and a few zombies as well. And 
again, if you try to go to Josh's boat sometimes... Not this time, but sometimes they spawn from somewhere and then they come toward, uh, running towards you. But I think we're done here. Now we're gonna go fight Irving. The Irving fight um, used to be hard for me, but I really learned that um, it's really not that hard. There's one um, first aid spray over here. Make sure to grab it. And then have Chris do this turret while we use the machine gun one. And he has really good aim. Chris has really good aim. So we're going to have him use that one while we use the machine gun. And we basically aim at his eye. Once he, uh, we hit the eye a certain amount of times, then he turns into these tentacles. All we do is aim at the white um, part of each tentacle to break it in half. When, uh, after we've done that a few times, then he comes back up, just aim at his eyeball. What you want to do with the aiming is aim a little above the eyeball. As you can see, the red cursor is like a little above the eyeball. Because it, it, it's a projectile, it, um, it forms a parabola. And it will land on the eyeball as it curves down towards it. So aim a little above it, as you can see here. Um, now we look for him, I'm not sure where he is. Oh, this part, this sequence, is a little hard. Um, all you can do is pretty much run around and try and dodge these tentacles. Not much you can do. All I do is kind of walk back and forth, make sure I'm staying in motion so that these tentacles don't hit me. But, um... It's, it seems like it's random if he's going to do the tentacle sequence or not. Sometimes he doesn't, um, which means you're lucky. The tentacle sequence is the most annoying one because we can't really damage him. You can shoot at the tentacles. Um, what they do is they can slap you and um, cause damage to you, or they can actually grab you, your whole body, and they try to strangle you, I think, causing more damage, and your partner can help you by shooting at the tentacles. Um, but again, I don't think shooting at the tentacles really does damage to, to Irving himself. So I think he's gonna spawn over here, yep. Yeah. There's a certain animation that he does after we've hit him a few times. He sinks into the ocean. But there's a certain way that he does it. Oh, so there we go. He's grabbed Chris, so we're going to try and save him by hitting the tentacle. Um. Yeah, he's getting hit by them. It's this is the worst sequence. Um, so we got pretty unlucky here, but So these tentacles, um, they don't seem like they're doing anything, but actually it just looks like that because we're destroying them before they get to do anything. Um, but what they do is they try to hit you um, from a, on, on your head, basically. They kind of drop on your head. Um, and you can, you get this command that says dodge. Um, but we're basically fast enough to not need to do that. 
Well, he's taking a really long time to... Oh, there we go. That's the sequence. That means he's going to phase two. He kind of shakes and um, sinks into the ocean. And that when that happens, that means this is going to happen. So we're going to have Chris grab onto the other one. And the first time he does this, he doesn't have any tentacles supporting him. Usually he has a few tentacles on his sides that you have to destroy. Um, make sure not to overheat the turret or else we're not going to be able to shoot. Once he sinks down, what I like to do is come back here so that we avoid that dodge animation that we have to do. So we're going to have Chris here. And here he is, back out, but this time he has all these tentacles to support him. So what I like to do is have Chris um, shoot at Irving while I get rid of the tentacles because he, Chris will never shoot the tentacles. So I'll get rid of the tentacles while the Chris tries to shoot Irving. He sunk into the water again, so what we're going to do is go um, stand back. And you can shoot the eyeball while he does that. But um, I'm not really sure if that helps killing him. It's just a fun thing to do. And then he's dead. So the reason why I chose the left turret is because his eyeball is only on the left side. Um, and obviously Chris won't shoot at the eyeball, so I like to use the left turret while Chris has the right turret. And Irving is dead. This next chapter we're going to be using the flash rounds quite a bit. And the rifle as well. Um, I like the ruins area a lot. Um, they have a lot of fun secrets and things like that. So, so here's a boat where Jill um, used to come here. And one of these, I think it's the second one, is always going to be a flash, a flash grenade. Here, I'm not sure if this is an easter egg, but it's just a little fun thing the developers did with the bug here, wiggling around in the lamp. Here's a campfire. Looks like human bones, maybe? And over here we're going to encounter our first spiders. Spiders are really, really annoying. But if you have um, anything related, flash grenade related, they're a piece of cake. So that's why I think the game gave it to us. Just to hint at us that we can use it to kill these guys really easily. There's one around the corner. They're very easy to kill, but they are hard to aim. So... <coughs> but here's a hidden gem here. And a base. Now I didn't know about this little chest here, but here is a gem. And... As soon as you approach here, a few of them will come out from the ground. You can just wait for them to to fully come out from the ground. If you try to use your flash rounds or your weapon to kill them, they won't get hit. You have to wait for them to fully come out from the ground. You have to wait them for um, the animation to finish. Down here is a, an emblem. And on that torch over there, there's a hidden gem. And over here, we're going to encounter a bunch of spiders. So what we're going to do is just run up to them, kill them all to not waste any flash rounds. 
And a lot more are going to show up here once we approach here. Um, yeah, there you are. So what spiders do is they do this little animation. Um, they start wiggling their feet at you or their legs at you, which means they're about to leap onto you and they basically grab onto your whole body and you can't move until your partner slashes it off you. So that's why they're very annoying. Here is an emblem again. When aiming at the emblems, you shoot right when the cursor is at the bottom of the emblem, not at the middle. I'm not sure why, but that's how I learned to be able to um, hit them. What I just did there was um, a hidden gem is on here, right here. So I just sniped it from far away, but you don't have to snipe it from there. You can just get closer and pick it up right here. Here's a spider. This guy is not one of those spiders. He's just a regular spider. It's just a little fun thing that you can kill, like a critter that you can kill. And I believe in the leader, um, in the, um, the records screen where it shows what how many times you've ki killed each enemy. I think there is one that says spiders. So if you're into getting your count up, then you can kill these spiders as you play this game. But here, the curse will always um, go past you because he is programmed to be on that side of the sequence while you are going to be on this side of the sequence. Um, even if you go straight past and get to that bridge that collapsed earlier than him, he will still end up being on that side. Um, obviously, if you're playing multiplayer, whoever goes first will be the one that's going to be um, standing where Chris is. So this is a sequence where you'll be separated. Basically, you'll be running through this pathway and going up those stairs around there and back here to reunite with him. This vase will always drop a hand grenade. Um, hand grenades are always handy. I really like them. Um, here, these guys will spawn, so I'll just throw a hand grenade. And a few of them will spawn again. Here as well, you can shoot at them. And as soon as you approach the stairs, get closer to the stairs, then more zombies will spawn. This guy will try to sneak up on you. So what you can do is before he does that, you can just run up to him and kill him first. Um, we got lucky over there. He usually does not. He his drops are random, so that those magnum ammos are actually really lucky. Um, this guy always turns into a cephalus, so be careful. Here's a an archer, and here's another one over here. Um, this is a secret gem here. And down in this room over there, you can see those spears. So you can just throw a hand grenade and try to get them. Alright, so I think we got them. So once you approach Chris, he'll come running towards you. Oh, 
There's another guy here. Use this. This pot over here will always drop a red herb. Thanks. Um, and once the music stops, you know you've killed all the zombies. This one, you need Chris's help to open, but there are two gems here, so make sure to get it. And then... In this room, there's an herb here, and a gem here, and another one here. You can't pick it up until you investigate it, and then you can pick it up. That's pretty much for this part. We're just gonna open this to activate the trap. This part, um... We're going to be picking up the gems while we kill the zombies that come from all directions. We're going to get this one first. Now the weird thing that Chris does here is that he stays in the center. Like a, he's going to be like a sitting duck. I'm not sure why, but, well he's not doing it now, which is good, but usually he will just kind of sit there in the middle. So we have to kind of make sure to help him out here. Um, these fire guys have a lot more HP than the usual zombies, so we kind of have to keep shooting at them until they die. Or you can do the throat, um, the slit throat sequence, or the melee move I mean, to kill them instantly. So I think that's it. We can move on. Now this part, I have I still haven't figured this out, but sometimes there's an emblem here. And there's something that you do, I think, before this part that makes the emblem show up here. Um, I've looked it up online and I cannot find out how to do it. But um, sometimes it's here. But it's okay if it's not there because it does show up later in the game. This part, what I like to do is, they don't move. Um, but what you can do is aim at them and they'll gather up for you. Once they're gathered, you can shoot the flash round to pretty much explode them so that you can kill them. Now he runs um, behind this wall. If he reaches the wall, then he spawns more enemies. So what you're trying to do is not let that happen. But usually that trick that I did with the flash rounds, there's always at least one of them that survives. So we just have to be ready to kill that one before he reaches the wall. Here you have to run and dodge these huge fireballs. Uh, fortunately it's very easy, but sometimes it can trick you and sometimes it will um, hit you. And these vases are all random. You can break them all you want to get any loot you want. And in multiplayer, if you're not the one running towards the door to stop those fireballs, then you can actually help your partner by shooting at the fireballs, and it will explode them before um, it can hit your partner. So that's just one way that you can help your partner. Here is the mashing button sequence. Again, I turned on the option to not do that because I just I'm not really a big fan of it, so we're just gonna wait for it to happen. But the next map that we're gonna be approaching has a lot of secrets as well, a lot of hidden gems and uh, tips that you can 
use to make your life easier. And it also has the an, uh, an emblem and a new weapon as well. So once that, that's over with, we can go here, grab onto this rope, and Chris will get the other one to open the area. Now here's an emblem that, that we're going to be approaching. This is the one I was talking about, where you don't have to worry about the one that may or may not show, because it's this one anyway. And here's a vase over here. Up there you can see a shining gem. You can drop it and we can pick it up later because we're going to be walking towards this area anyway. We don't have to waste our time just to go up to that gem because we'll be going there anyway. Now over here is a new weapon and it's not new for us because we already have it in our hand but it's the grenade launcher. So if you've never picked one up before then you take that. Roger. Um, we can pick it up now. Here, we'll have to split up because this rock is in the way. Chris, so Chris okay, will stay here while I get the other one. But before we do that, we can go over here to find a hidden gem here. And then we'll be walking all the way around to get to that rope. And before we do that, we're going to be picking up, um, breaking this face, and it's always going to be a first aid spray, so make sure to get it um, if you're low on healing items. And now we have the rope, and every time, except for the first one, every time you pull these ropes, the statue will have a gem. So make sure to pick those up. Those little bats over here, you can actually kill them, but they don't drop anything. We're going to go up here, and there's a treasure around the corner, right here. And we're going to activate this rope. And again, we're going to pick up the gem right here. And then we're going to get our sniper rifle ready because there's going to be a whole bunch of zombies as soon as we walk here. And what I'd like to do is get the archers first um, and the fire guy. The fire guy has a lot of HP, so make sure you get that headshot so you don't have to sink bullets in him all the time. And some of them will be approaching there. Yeah, there he, here they come. So there's a few coming in. But It's deceptive because there's actually a lot more zombies that are be coming in. Um, so it looks like we're clear, except for that one over there. So it looks like it's clear, but um, actually after this one. But there's a lot more zombies, actually, that we'll be fighting. So what we're going to do is get ready. And a lot more start spawning. And as soon as we approach here, two more zombies are going to drop down from there. And from there, there's always an archer there, and a guy here. So 
So this is where we sniped that gem from the ceiling. So now we can pick it up here. And that's pretty much it. There's some faces over there that you can break for items, but not, not much else to do here. And the next part we're going to um, will also be a lot of surprise zombies. This map, I think, a lot of people can die in because there's just a lot of a lot of zombies that try to catch you off guard. You take that. Okay. Thanks. Um, but here you can pick up some flash rounds, and I love flash rounds, so it's always welcome. And we're gonna get this rope here. And pick up the gem, and then this is the next statue that we're gonna be doing. But there's only one rope, so we're gonna have Chris wait here. Well, we're going to have to go all the way down here to get the rope. And as soon as we approach the statue, or try to approach it, we're going to have some zombies and spiders. And what I like to do is immediately try to get the rope so that... Oh, Chris is getting... So that's what I was talking about, how spiders can make you stop moving. Um, but make sure to get the ruby. I'm going to use the spray here because Chris is not near us. Um, but yeah, this part is e very easy to die, because a lot of zombies, a lot of spiders coming out of everywhere. I think that's it. Spider. Over here, um, this face over here always drops a landmine. Um, and this one again will be really useful, so we're going to pick it up. We're going to make sure to go up where Chris was before, because every statue leaves uh, a gem. And since Chris, Chris won't pick it up for us, we're going to come back here and pick it up. And now we're going to face a boss. And what we're going to do is prepare for the boss by putting the mine right here, right where the mound peaks. And we're going to use the ropes, get the gem. And as soon as we approach towards the exit, this guy pops up. Now this guy, again, you can skip him too. You can actually skip him by running right past him towards the exit um, and it actually triggers a sequence where he um, gets crushed by two pillars and he'll die 
But if you do that, then you won't be able to pick up this gem. So if you want the gem, then you'll have to kill him. But if you decide not to kill him, you just go up these stairs. And once you go past these two pillars over here, I think either these or these, um, the cutscene will happen where the boss gets crushed by these two pillars and he'll die. So again, the, a lot of these enemies in this game are optional. Um, the enemies in the map, the random zombies as well, they're all optional because as soon as you trigger the ropes, they despawn. They all despawn. So the next area is going to be another one of my favorites. Now we're going to be needing the other rifle to s with the better scope. And I'll tell be telling um, why, but for now I'm just going to clear out the inventory. And it looks good. So the next area is where the sunbeams appear. Um, and they're very, very annoying. So we're going to deactivate them. But here's a hidden gem. And the way to deactivate them... This, um, but yeah, this vase here always drops a hand grenade. And here is where you can kill the bats, just for fun. Um, but the way to deactivate the sunbeams, well, you have to first activate them. After this cutscene, then they will be activated. And it's very annoying because you have to wait for them to pass every time you want to go to that different areas. So what you can do is use this hole over here. You stand just a little to the right of the hole. Get your rifle and aim towards this one. You can see um, a bit of the zombie's head. If you shoot him, then that one gets deactivated. And the one on the right, you have to go here. Right over there. I believe it has to be somewhere over here. Now this one's a little more dangerous because you are much closer to the beams. But if you get it just right, then you'll be able to kill him. Yeah, you can see him right there. I might have to go a little closer, but... Gonna try over here. It has to align just right or else you can't really hit him. There we go. So that's just a little trick. Um, there is an easier spot where you can hit them, but I like to do it this way because it just gets rid of them from the beginning of the map. While the other way to do it is you have to go through some of the beams. Um, and I just try to avoid that as much as possible because the beams are very annoying. Here you can snipe these guys from afar. 
Uh, there's always three of them. Well, I guess I trigger the the spawn here. Um, but there's always three of those archers. This guy's patiently waiting for us to kill him. And if you go over here, there's some bases. I'll be breaking them now because I need some rifle ammo. So the reason why I like to carry only one type of gun that requires ammo is because there's a higher chance of dropping rifle ammo this way. As opposed to if you have a machine gun and a rifle, then many of the times it's going to drop. As you can see, I was already able to re recuperate mo most of the ammunition that I wanted. But, um, just that's just how the game works. But as soon as you pick up... Um, come to this area, then it triggers these um, zombies. As soon as you pick up the, the circle here, these zombies will spawn. Fortunately, they're pretty easy with the, the bow. Now that we're done with that, we can keep moving forward. And again, this part, usually you have to wait for the sunbeams to go. It's, a, it's such a pain, so that this is why I like to get rid of them way in the beginning of the, this, uh, the map, so that we don't have to worry about it at all. Here's a secret gem here. Um, and here's an herb right here. And over here there's always a guy here. With the shield. And if you still have the sunbeams active at this point, you can actually have them killed by the sunbeams. But we got rid of them. So, and here you can place a land, um, a bomb here. And the reason for this is because we get split here after I get boosted by Chris. And a few zombies will spawn over there and try to get Chris. So, it's just to deter that, we put a proximity bomb there. As soon as I get boosted, a whole bunch of zombies are going to spawn. So I just like to stay back here and shoot them down. There's another one coming up here. And as soon as I get too close, then the giant Magini spawns. And he completely ignores you. He will go straight to where Chris is. So the goal is to not let that happen, but I guess a little too, too slow this time. Um, but you, you can see that the bomb already activated because the zombie tried to come towards here. There's another one that's coming up. 
So we're gonna just kill him. And that's it for that sequence. And here's a hidden gem over here. And another one coming up. Oh, so this is the area where you can kill the zombie to deactivate this beam. And the other area where the giant Magini landed is where you can aim to deactivate the other one. But I like to do it Again, I like to do it way in the beginning so that we can freely move around without worrying about the beams. And here, as soon as you approach here, a lot of zombies are going to be spawning. There's a hidden jam right there. Well, what I like to do is snipe them from here. As soon as you get closer, a lot more are going to show up like this. Controller's acting up a little bit. So. But there you go. And a lot more are going to be showing up up there as soon as you approach the circle thing. We're just going to pick it up real quick. Like here's an herb. And here comes more enemies. Okay, so as soon as we come down here and go through this passageway, we unlock a checkpoint and we get a secret gem here. Now checkpoints are really useful because in case you die, you go back to that area. So I like to activate them just in case. And here um, you put those circle things, and we can move on to the next area. And before we do that, we're going to pick up this gem right there. The next area is the puzzle sequence. Um, before we do that, there's always a snake here, and there's always a little spider there. And there's another one down here. Now it's a shame that we can't skip this puzzle because it is a little annoying to do, but it's not that hard, so... It's not as bad as the savanna where... Fortunately, we can skip that because it's a whole chapter. Well, basically, we want to go to this one. Wait for Chris to finish his dialogue. Once he's on the platform, we can move this to the left. And we can proceed to the next one. Not much else to do in these maps. For this one, we want to move this one first, to the right.
I like to keep that pillar on there and kick it down last so that we can freely move around the, the room without worrying about dying by those beams. Now Chris already picked it up, but there's a gem over here. Um, and all we have to do is kick this pillar down. And it looks good. Just kick this pillar down. And we can go to the last one. Okay, that's done. Let's move. Now the next room, we have a lot of goodies waiting for us. Um, what we do is move this one to the right, this one to the right, and before you um, move this one to the right to open the treasure rooms. What I like to do is open this on purpose. It's a trap. It has nothing inside and it um, spawns all these spiders. But I like to kill them all because I have the flash rounds and it's just it's really, it's really satisfying. So that's why I like to do that. And you also get a, a whole bunch of loot. Unfortunately, it didn't drop any rifle ammo. So now we can do this. If you do this before opening the chest, then the spiders won't spawn anymore. That's why I did it before opening the these rooms. Here, two spiders will spawn. And if you turn around here, you find an emblem. Here you can um, get rid of the spears on the poor guy. And right around here is a treasure. And then in this room, um, well before we go into that r the other room, what we can do is put this back to the left. Move this one to the left. And move this one back to the right. So that we can activate the elevator. And then we can go into this room where all the goodies are. Now these vases, some of them have, um, as you can see, um, snakes in them. So, what I like to do is break the vases from afar so that I don't have to worry about them attacking me. But yeah, there they are. This one dropped the brown egg. Um, I try to avoid using the flash rounds here because it crashes the game. So you can use flash rounds to destroy all the vases, kill all the snakes, and destroy these things so you can just pick them up, pick the gems up. But I guess that's too much for the, the switch I'm assuming and it just crashes the game so you just have to kind of go through them one by one. After that we're done, so we can go here, into the elevator, Great. Now let's get out of here. and we're done with the ancient ruins area. And we're going to be entering the experimental facility area. Um, this area, 
we're gonna get our Dragonov back. Not much, I think we need. Now this area, um, there's a few secret gems. There's one up here. If you go around here, There's an emblem. And then we're gonna go all the way around. To pick up this jewel over here. And where you pick up the jewel, if you look up, and you see the this crease here? There's a jewel right next to it. So you can shoot at it to drop it. And now we go all the way up here, past the flowers, and the gem will be right here. And that's pretty much for this area. And this is where we first encounter the liquors. You can actually shoot at it. And it'll run away. Um, but with any other weapon, I think um, if you aim at it, whoops. If you put your place your aimer at the liquor, it will just move away before you can even shoot it. But here's some handgun ammo that I just had, and then this is a machine gun ammo. Here's an herb. Oh, Chris is having some issues there. And here, um, you can turn this computer on. Well, maybe not that one. Um, but you can break these glass glasses here for fun. Turn this computer on just for fun. Here's some shotgun shells. And... A box to break here. And this door to open. Get this crank, break the glass, and here's some experimental animals. Poor, poor things, we just put them out of their misery. Here's a dog, another goat. There's an herb over there, and this is where we first encounter um, a liquor. This one's being like extra jumpy for some reason. Once they're on the ground like that, with their bellies exposed and they're like seizuring, you can actually go up to them and do the heart attack um, melee move, which basically you just use your knife and stab them out of the heart. Um, and it kills them instantly. Um, but make sure to kill the second one because it drops the gem. But even if you miss it, it's okay because there will be other liquors up ahead that will drop it anyway. But here's the red herb. 
Here's some cash. And here's a machine gun. These boxes, you can just run into them. Here's a handgun ammo. There's a box over there. And if you open this, you can see a bunch of liquors. And I'm not really sure if you can kill them this way, but you can still shoot at them and damage them. I don't believe they die. This part is a little hard. Um, what you do is you just walk past these liquors not to um, awaken them. You don't kick this door open for the same reason. And you kick this door open. Now this one you have to kick open. So the liquors do start chasing you. What you can do is um, these liquors are totally skippable. Um, it is a little hard to do that though because as soon as you activate the elevator, more liquors will start showing up. It spawns more liquors, so. This part's a little tough because we don't have a shotgun. But not that bad. As soon as we do that tongue attack, what you can do is shoot at them so that they'll stop doing that. Or you can have your partner Get rid of the tongue for you. There's some more coming up here. Oh, my controller is acting up here. I'm using the Joy-Cons wirelessly, so they're not really reliable. an example of where the tongue attack happened, but I shot at him before the tongue reached me, so he stopped doing um, I was freed from it before Chris was needed to even help me out there. Now sometimes there's some liquor stuck on that door, but this time I guess not. So that's why I ran back there, but... And now we're going to activate more liquors. I might need these grenades. Where's the damn elevator? But again, these guys are also optional. You don't have to kill them. As soon as the elevator is activated like that, you don't have to keep killing them. You can just go in and move on to the next level. So I think we got all of them. Um, and another way to do that part is you can just keep using either hand grenades or 
incendiary grenades, flash grenades, whatever you have to keep them at bay while you wait for the elevator to come back. Um, this boss, uh, a boss is coming up and it's always nice to have some hand grenades for this boss because once his mouth opens, after you shoot him a couple of times, you can approach his mouth and um, throw that grenade in his mouth. And three grenades will um, kill him. Here's some shotgun ammo. Here's a hand grenade. Now he has those flying things that he spawns. What you can do is you just have to run up to them and they will die. They fly to some to a wall or to something and they will die. And what they do is they drop ammo. So the way you do this boss is you kill or um, you hit the boss on the leg here. As soon as he does that animation, you can run up to him and throw in the hand grenade. And you can ex um, hit that exposed part of his head. But honestly, I don't think it's worth it. I think it's better to just hit him on the leg here. Much safer, much easier to aim. And again, he already did that animation, so we can go up to, to his face and throw in the grenade. We don't have another hand grenade, so we'll just have to kill him the old fashioned way. Or um, we can wait for it to be dropped by one of the, the flying enemies. But I believe there is one more hand grenade. Oh, there it's right there. So we're gonna pick it up. Gonna shoot his foot or his leg. I'm going to pick up the rifle ammo because we're going to be needing it later as well. But there he goes, he's going to die now, so... Pretty easy, as long as you have hand grenades um, and a decent weapon to cause that stun. So that you can throw those hand grenades in his mouth. One, two, three, and he's dead. Um, I think I'll be stopping here for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope it's useful. Um, and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.